So in our previous video, from scratch, we started creating this shell of a game called Copycat. So if I do back arrow star, we can see the files that we worked on in a previous video. We did quite a bit. We started with speed script to put together some notes on uh, about how we were going to design the game and what we we're going to create for it. We made a custom version of Turbo Macro Pro. That's the TMP file there. We created a delay routine. That was the, the pauses that we need when we're playing sounds. We created some macros called common.m where we've got a poke and we've got um, a memory set and some print and print text routines. We created a sound routine so we can play the sounds for our game. We created a file called game state which manages the game state, what round we're in, what the pattern is we're going to play to the player. And then of course we created the copycat program itself and that gave us just enough gameplay to have the core game logic. And let's take a quick look at the game logic that we have now. So I'm going to use back arrow one to pop into basic. And I'm going to say 4096 to run our game code. As you can see, I didn't get past round one, but that's okay. But we have the very core or the minimal viable product. And now we need to add some visualization to this game. So we're going to get back into the editor. We're going to cold start this with back arrow C. Hit yes, and cold start just basically means start a new file. And this file we're going to call screen.s. And these are going to be the subroutines for dealing with the screen. And the very first thing we're going to create is init screen. All right. And again, the block, the block begin, block end is something you want to do anytime you create a subroutine using Turbo Macro Pro. What the block statement does is it tells Turbo Macro Pro that any labels that we use in between them are private to this block and the rest of our program won't be able to step on them. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to set the background and the border color to black and we can use our set mem macro to do that. And what we're going to do is start with D020. The border memory address is D020. The screen's D021. So we can set them both to zero uh, in one call. Uh, we're going to want to create a little block of text here. I'll call text I uh, SCN as text initialize screen. And this is going to be a null terminated block of text that we're going to use to pass to our print routine in a moment. If we press back arrow A, this is going to put us into quote mode like in basic. So I can send screen commands and it'll be captured in the quotes. So here we can press shift clear to clear the screen and control two to set the color to white. And then we could type in the word round to display the label before we print the actual round number. And we're going to press back arrow to get back out of quoted mode. And then up here, we're going to call a macro, call print, and we're going to pass in the memory address of text ISCN, so we'll print the text. So this will be a good way to get started. So now up here, we're going to create our test code for this, so back arrow two. And then this file is going to be called screen, and this is going to contain our test code. We're going to set the origin to 1,000 which again is 4096. And then we're gonna call JSR init screen, and then we do RTS. We also need to bring in the macros that we created in common.m. Okay, so let's save this before we do anything. Okay, let's assemble this. Okay, I'm gonna drop the basic, and we're gonna run our program. And this is exactly what we wanted to have happen. The screen is black. We have the word round at the top and we're ready to now display the round number. So let's get back into the editor. Next, we're gonna create a subroutine called update the score. And that's gonna print the round number next to round. And then later we're gonna put the score there as well. In order to test this, however, we need to bring in pretty much everything from the game. So we need to include our delay routine, which is in delay.s. We need to include the sound routine in sound.s. And we need to include the game state routines in game state.s. And then, of course, just like we're about to start the game, we need to initialize the sound device. We need to initialize the game. The init game function requires routines from init sound. And then we have our init screen function here. So now we're going to create a routine called update score. I envision us calling this routine pretty much every time the user presses a key and advances the game forward in any meaningful way. So the first thing we need to do is we need to move the cursor to right after the word round. 
and we're going to do this by calling a kernel routine called plot. Plot's an interesting routine. It actually does two things. I can either ask the kernel where the cursor is, and it will place the answer in the X and the Y registers, or I can also call it and tell it that I want to set the position of the cursor. And the way that you toggle the two modes is through the carry flag. So if the carry flag is clear, and we're going to force it with a CLC, and this means that when we call plot, it will set the row to the value in the X register and the column to the value in the Y register. And then plot is at JSR E50A. So now the cursor is at that spot, but we want to set the color to yellow. I think yellow would look good for this. So we're going to load into the accumulator a 7, which is the yellow key. It's the equivalent of pressing, I believe, Control 8. It's zero base, so even with Control 8, it would be 7. And then we're going to store that in memory location 0286. That memory location is what tells all the routines that print text to the screen what color to use. So the next thing we're going to do is actually print the value to the screen. So the value is stored in a, in a one byte value in a label called round in our game state module. And we want to print that number. Now internally, it's a byte and it has the number one when a game starts. But we want to print the actual number one. We can have basic do that function for us. Basic has a function called inprint. And it's really designed for printing 16-bit values, and ours is only an 8-bit value. But we're going to trick into printing our 8-bit value as if it were a 16-bit value. So the way that this inprint routine works is you load into the accumulator the high byte value of the integer. We're just going to put 0 because we don't have a high byte value. We're just going to be printing a number between 1 and 20. Then we load into the X register round. So this will go into the value that's sitting memory location round and load it into the X index register, which will be the value in 1 when a game starts. And then we call JSR BDCD. And now to test this, we'll just simply call it right under in its screen. So let's save our code and let's test this out. Perfect. Round and our yellow one. Let's make sure other values work. So we know that it's printing the round out of memory location around. So let's set that to a different number like 20. Excellent, and that works. These routines are now ready to be integrated into the main game code. So we're going to extract this portion of the file to a screen.s file. So we're going to press left arrow M S to mark where we're going to start copying text. Left arrow M E. And then we use left arrow, left arrow B for block, W for write. And we're going to write this out to screen.s. And now we're going to load our copycat main code file. All right, so at the very bottom, we need to add our new include that we created, screen.s, to bring in our screen routines. Then we're going to jump to the top, and I did that with back arrow, up arrow. All right, so right after we initialize the game, we want to call initialize screen. So that, of course, will clear our screen and, and get the word round at the top there. And then in a round loop, right before we play the pattern, we're going to insert a, a command here to update the score. So let's save this. Let's assemble it. And now let's run it. Awesome. We now have a round indicator. Now that we have round displaying, let's work on a code that's going to manage the score. So we're going to go back into the game state routines to do that. If 
First, we need to declare a spot in memory to store the score. So we'll create a label called score, and we're going to assign it two bytes of memory. Because so we're going to be storing this as a 16-bit integer. What we're going to do in a game is every time the player presses a number right and they get the right sound, we're going to award them 100 points. So we're going to create a subroutine called add 100 points. So what does adding a 16-bit value look like in assembler? Well, if you imagine we have a number, 00FF, and we want to add one to it, uh, it's probably pretty easy in your head to realize it's going to be a 100. But what does that math actually look like? So because we have an 8-bit CPU, we have to do the math here 8 bits at a time. So we're going to break these into two 8-bit values. So imagine that we want to add 1 to this. So what would the math look like? Well, f plus 1 is 10. Remember, this is hex. So we would have a carrying of the 1, and we'd put a 0 here, right? f plus 1 is also 10, so we'd have a 0 here. And then we're done because we're doing an 8-bit operation. When we use the add memory to accumulator with carry, uh, the result, if there is a carry, it sets what's called the carry flag. All right, and we're going to put C equals 1 up here, because that's our carry flag. So next we tell the computer that we want to add 0 plus 0. And in the name of the mnemonic is add with carry. We're going to say 0 plus 0 is 0, plus the carry gives us 1. And now there's no carry flag, because there's nothing to set. And then 0 plus 0 is 0, and we end up with 0100. So that's how the math works in a computer. So now let's, let's actually do that. We're going to add 100 to our score. So we're going to load into our accumulator 100. All right? We're going to clear the carry bit. We want to make sure that the carry bit is clear on our first edition because we don't want to accidentally bring in another value that we didn't intend on bringing in. Now we're going to say add with accumulator the value in score. Score starts at 0. We're going to add 100 in. Remember, this is 100 decimal now. We're not doing uh, 100 in hex. So now in the accumulator, is 100. So now we've got to store the accumulator back into score. So now we've, we've made that 100. Now we need to do uh, this side. Now if this number produced a carry, that's great. It's going to be there. So now we're going to load into the accumulator 0. So now we're going to add to the accumulator score plus 1. Uh, if there was a carry, it would bring that in as well. We're going to store the result in score plus 1. And we're done. We've added 100 points. And that's how that works. So the last thing we need to do is in our init game subroutine up here, we need to make sure that we set that score to zero. So we're going to set mem score to zero and for two bytes, score and score plus one. So now we're going to save this. Okay, and now we're going to pull out this part here and save it to game state.s. So we do left hour ms, left hour me, left hour block right and this is going to be at colon game state dot s all right so now that we've got a score and we have a routine to add 100 points to it we need to update our screen routine to print it so what we want to first add is the actual word score into the top of our game all right so let's do i don't know one two three four five spaces and the word score this way we'll have round the round number in yellow, score, and then a score in yellow. And now we just need to update our update score routine to do both. So we're going to add a little comment here that says uh, this part displays the round. I'll move that over here. And then this part here is going to display the score. All right. So if you remember from just a few moments ago when we talked about the round, we're going to use the plot route. And if we clear the carry bit, that means we're going to set the cursor to a location when we call this routine. So we're going to go to row 0, and then we load the Y register with column 17, and then we do a JSR into E50A to move the cursor over. All right. The cursor color is still yellow. As you can see above, we set it with the, with the uh, 7 going into memory address 286. So now what we need to do is have basic print the score for us. So now we're going to load into the X register score. We're going to load into the accumulator score plus 1. So that forms the 16-bit value that we want to print. And then we're going to call our subroutine BDCD again to print it out. And that takes care of our screen. So let's save this. 
And then let's save this. So left arrow mark S, left arrow mark end, block right. Now we just need to make a change to our core game logic to incorporate the scoring into our routines. So what we want to do here is add another call to update score. This way the score is refreshed every time we're waiting for a key press. Now when do we increase the score? Well, when I press a good key. So we're going to put it, eh, right here looks fine. I'm going to add 100 points. And that should hopefully uh, take care of it. So let's save this. And uh, let's let's assemble this. And let's try our game out. Why did it get too far? Let's try it again. Awesome. So now we have a round and we have a score. Let's pop back into the editor. We're going to jump back into the screen routine and we're going to add some code to bring some life to our game here. So what I did is I ran the game for a couple seconds and then I kind of built uh, this mock layout of what I want the game to look like. And I put some markers so I could figure out where to plot our text. So the next thing we're going to add is this little key legend part here, where it has the keys and the different colors that you press for, for the game. And then I put the word copycat and the colors of the game kind of towards the middle of the screen. Um, and then I put little markers of where we can plot these squares uh, along the X and Y axis. So using that, let's start with just building out the keys part, and then we'll build the logo part. And we'll go from there. So let's get started with this. All right, so we're going to go down to our text screen here. We're going to add a couple things here. We're going to add two carriage returns to this. So we're going to do uh, left arrow A, shift enter, shift enter. Oops, left arrow. Delete, delete. Got a couple bonus characters there. So that's going to, you know, carriage return, carriage return down a line. And then we're going to add a new line called text keys. This is going to take us a couple lines to get in there. So we'll go through this as uh, slow as I can. So we're going to do keys colon space left arrow A to put us in quoted mode, control 9 for verse video, and then the color we want is Commodore 7, which is light blue, space 1, space control 0 for verse off, space control 9 for verse back on. Okay, we're going to do control 8 for yellow, space 2, space control 0 for verse off, put a space, we're going to put a, uh, I'm going to put a quote, and then we're going to press enter. Oops left arrow to get out of that mode and press enter. It's a little tricky when you come in and out of that quoted mode. So we need some more text to put in to continue that on. All right, backslash A, control nine, control three for red, three, control zero, space, control nine for verse video on, and then control six for green, space, four, space, reverse off. Oops, left arrow to get out of quoted mode. And then we're going to do text title. This is going to be that phrase copycat that's going to appear in the middle there. So we'll start with Commodore 7 for blue, C, control 8 for yellow, O, control 3 for red, control 6 for green, Commodore 7 for that blue again, control 8 for yellow, A. Control three for T, back arrow, quote. All right, I think we got it all. Uh, we will know how accurate I got this when we run this to the screen in a moment. <laughs> so now let's go up to our init screen function and add more um, print routines to print those out. So we're gonna print text keys. We're gonna print text keys two. Now to get this copycat phrase in the middle, we're just gonna call plot to move the cursor for us. Uh, so we do that by clearing the carry register because we want to tell plot that we're setting the cursor location. 
and we're going to move it to 11 by 11 and we're going to JSRRE 50A routine. Um, it'd probably be a good idea to move this into a macro, but we're already down the road here, so we're going to leave it the way it is. But I could easily see, as I've used this a few times already, this would be a really good candidate of code to uh, put into a macro. And now that the cursor's moved, let's make a call to our print text title. Okay, and uh, let's save this. And assemble this now. And let's give this a run. Excellent. Just imagine this is not here. And now our game is starting to take visual shape. Okay, now we're going to write the routines that draw and hide the big four squares. That's really the uh, foundation of our game. So we're going to jump to the bottom here. First, we're going to declare a string called text box line. So each box is five lines that are 10 characters wide in reverse video. So this particular phrase here is going to represent one line of that. So we're going to do reverse on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and reverse off. Okay. And now we can get a little cheesy. We're going to make a text box next. And what this is going to do is it's going to move the cursor down into the beginning of the line. So it starts with down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right. So we're basically drawing using the kernel routines the five lines. And we're going to draw a line across, go down, go left, draw a next line, go down, go left, etc. There's more efficient ways to do this for sure. Uh, for example, we could have written directly to the screen and then written directly to color in right behind it, but this will work good enough for our first game ever. We don't have to get too crazy optimizing our code. All right, so now we're going to create the XY coordinates of those boxes, the starting position at the top left. Let's just put a little reminder text of what we're looking at here. Box one is blue, two is yellow, three is red, four is green. All right. So for the first box, it's going to be at zero across and six down. All right, that's going to be our blue. We're going to do one at 20 across, six down. This is our yellow. Let's kind of make this a little bit better. Uh, we're going to have red at zero across, 12 down. And then we're going to have green at 20 across, 12 down. All right, we need to declare what colors the boxes. Are. We're gonna use 14 for light blue, seven for the yellow, two for the red, and five for green. We also need one byte of memory, and this is gonna be used when we're drawing the boxes, and there's like a mode. We're gonna call zero clearing it, where we're gonna erase the box from the screen, and one is gonna be when we draw it to the screen. And this will make sense when we get into that function. All right, so right up here, we're going to create a uh, subroutine called paint box. This routine is going to take in the accumulator which box you want to uh, paint. So this will be uh, which box, one, two, three, or four. Um, and then we're going to also read the box mode to decide if we're going to use a color to paint it, you know, blue, red, green, yellow, or we're going to use black to erase it. So first thing we need to do is set the color. So we need to prepare the X index register so we can look up the color in that box colors uh, byte down there. So what we need to do is we're going to transfer the accumulator to X so that if we're passing in a one, for example, we're going to throw one into the X register. Because it's based uh, from zero, one, two, and three, we need to decrement X by one, right? This way, if we pass in a one, the first color we get that light blue, that 14. We're going to load into the accumulator box colors index by x so that's going to load into the accumulator our color we're going to store that in memory address 0286 this is for the kernel to know that all the plotting routines and print routines going forward will use this color we're going to set the accumulator to zero we're going to compare box mode to zero if it's not a zero we're going to skip ahead 
and we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, if it is zero, we need to overwrite the color we just set with zero for black. Okay, because instead of drawing a color, we're going to use the same routine, but we're going to clear it out. So this label is called lookup xy. And now we're going to look up the xy coordinates here to feed into the kernel plot routine so we can start drawing our box. So if you remember before, our x index register had a zero based value of the color we're going to use, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, that we use like a box color. Well, that's still, that value is still in the X register. So we're going to take that X register and transfer it back to the accumulator. And then with that, we're going to arithmetic shift left it by 1. This will have the effect of multiplying it by 2. Now, this is going to be useful to look up the coordinate, right? Because if it's a 0, remember 1 is a 0 now. This will 0 times 0, 0 will get this set of coordinates. If uh, we passed in yellow as a 2, by the time I got into the x index register, it's a 1. 1 times 2 is 2, and 0, 1, 2, here's yellow, and so on. So now we've multiplied that by 2. It's sitting in the accumulator. We're going to transfer that accumulated back into the x index register. All right. So, and we'll just kind of put a little comment here of what we're doing here. We are setting x to look up the xy. So now we're going to plot it. We're going to plot to the x and y. We're going to use the kernel plot routine. Again, we got to clear the carry. So we're telling the routine that we're going to set the x and y coordinates. Let me just move the screen down here. We're going to load into the accumulator the box x, y is indexed by x, right? So that's going to be, let's pretend we're doing yellow. We'll get a 20 out of that. We're going to transfer the accumulator into the y. So now it's in place for the plot routine in a y index register. Now we're going to load the accumulator with box x, y as plus 1 comma x. This way we can get this second number here. right? And then we're going to transfer the accumulator into the x register. So now the index and now the x and y uh, registers have the values we need. And then we're going to call the plot routine at E50A to move the cursor to that spot. All right, we're getting there. Uh, now that we have the cursor sitting where we want, we've got the color we want, now we're going to print that line five times. All right. We're going to load and we're going to load the x index register with a four because we're going to run through this routine five times four, three, two, one, and zero. And we're going to create a loop. We're going to make a call to print text box line that's going to draw the, the reverse 10 spaces in the color we've chosen. And then we're going to print text box next. That's going to press down and go left 10 spaces in preparation for the next line. All right. And then we're going to decrement x by 1, so that 4 becomes a 3. If it's a 0, the 0 flag gets set. And we're going to branch, if it's not 0, back into the loops. So that would give us the routine to do it five times. Now, there's a slight complication here. All right. We've loaded the x register with a 4, and we've called these two routines these two routines are going to change the state of our x register because it's using the x index register for what it's doing so we need to preserve that so we're going to use the stack we're going to transfer this x register to the accumulator and then push the accumulator onto the stack you can't push an x index register directly onto the stack and that's why we moved it into the accumulator and then we call our print routines and then when those are work we pull the accumulator off the stack and then we transfer back into the x register so it adds a little complication to the routine, but nothing nothing too much. All right, now we're getting somewhere. So now we've got a very long routine that's going to paint the box onto the screen. So we want to make it a little bit easier for us to call. So we're actually going to create two subroutines that are going to call the paint box. But these two subroutines are what we're going to use elsewhere in the game. So we're going to create one called draw the box. Draw box and the accumulator is going to have the color. One is blue, etc. etc. So, what we're going to do here again, we need to preserve the accumulator because we're going to need it in a moment. We're going to poke the box mode with one. This sets it to paint mode. We're going to pull the accumulator back so the accumulator stays a one. And then we're going to JSR to paint box. And that is going to paint it onto the screen. Now, we need a version of this that's going to clear it. So we're going to do a little copy paste here. We're going to go left arrow mark set, left arrow mark end, 
uh, left arrow block C for copy. And we're going to call this instead clear box. It's going to clear the screen. All right. And the only difference we're going to make is this is going to be a zero. All right, so we got some pretty simple routines here. All right, so, so here we're going to create a routine called test box. And this is going to test our, our box printing logic. So we need to create a label here just to kind of store in a byte which box number we're working on. This subroutine is going to assume the accumulator is the box number to print. So what this function is going to do, if we pass in, for example, one for blue, it's going to paint the blue blocks, pause for a second, and then remove the blue box. This way we can test that each one of these boxes can turn on and off correctly. So we're going to store the accumulator into this little byte here to put it aside. And then we're going to JSR draw the box, because remember draw box wants the box number in accumulator. We're going to load the accumulator with a 60, and then we're going to call our delay routine to pause for a second. We're going to load the accumulator back with a box number that was passed in here originally. All right. And then we're going to JSR clear box to clear it off the screen, and then this is going to return. All right, we're, uh, we're in the home stretch here, and we're just going to write some really, really simple test code. All right, so we're going to load in a one. We're going to call test box. We're going to load in a two. We're going to call test box. We're going to load in a three. We're going to call test box. I keep putting text box in there. Let's try this again up here. And then we're going to load in a four and call test box. And then to be nice to ourselves, we're going to set the cursor color back to white. Because the very end of test box, it's got the black to clear it out, and, and we have a black screen, so we want to have a nice white color. All right, let's save it. Let's assemble it. And let's run it. Awesome, looking really good. Now that we have our screen routines working and tested, let's export this to screen.s. So left arrow ms, left arrow me, uh, left arrow bw, and we're gonna overwrite screen.s. All right, so let's load up game state because we're gonna wire these routines into the game logic. All right. So at the top of our game state test code, we need to add a reference to the screen routines because these are now necessary to, uh, to test the game logic out. Okay, now we're gonna head down into the play pattern subroutine. This is the routine that plays the notes to the player. You know, one, three, two, four, etc. cetera. Um, and then we're gonna wire in code that right after the sound plays, we're gonna show the box on the screen. So here's how we're gonna do that. So right after we load in the next note in the pattern, so this is gonna load in a one, two, three, or four, we're actually gonna push a copy of that value onto the stack. So we're gonna push the accumulator into the stack. And the reason why is as we call these other functions, it's going to uh, change the value that's in the accumulator, and we're gonna want this back. So we're gonna start playing the sound. Once that sound has started playing, we're gonna pull the accumulator off the stack, so we have the one, two, three, or four back. We're going to immediately push it back onto the stack because we're going to call a routine here that's going to uh, leave the accumulator in a different state. And that routine is draw box. So that's going to draw the box on the screen. All right. We're going to load a third into the accumulator. We're going to call delay. That's our pause. Um, and now we need to pull the accumulator off the stack so we can call clear box. Okay. That's going to remove the box from the screen. Then we're going to call stop sound, a little bit of a pause and then it's gonna continue the loop that we wrote before and play it to the player. So let's uh, give this a save. Let's assemble it. All right, now let's test it. Excellent, it works. So let's pop back into the editor. Then let's export this out. So we're gonna do 
left arrow ms to start marking it, left arrow me, left arrow bw, and we're going to overwrite game state dot s. All right, let's load up the copycat main game code and let's integrate it here as well. And we're almost in a home stretch of getting our visualizations more or less up and running. First place we're going to wire ourselves into is the bad key. This label is called when a player presses the wrong number. So what we're going to do here is we're going to insert um, some code. We're going to push the accumulator onto the stack. Okay, again, that's going to be a one, two, three, four, the key that they pressed. We're going to call draw box, which is going to leave the accumulator with some other value. So we're going to pull that accumulator off the stack now. So now it's back to where we needed. Uh, but we're going to push it onto the stack again. All right, so now we're going to play the sound. It's going to delay for 30 seconds. And then here we're going to pull that accumulator back off the stack. So we have, again, the one, two, three, or four. And now we're going to call clear box. And that's going to remove the box from the screen. And then the only other place I think we need to hit is this good key uh, label. And it's really the same thing. So we need to push the accumulator onto the stack. Again, that's the one, two, three, four button I press. That was correct. We're going to call it draw box, which is going to leave the accumulator with a different value. So we pull it off the stack again to get it back. We're going to push it back on the stack. We're going to play the sound. We're going to wait 30 seconds. Um, and then we're going to pull it off the stack. And then we're going to call clear box to clear the box off the screen. And then I think that's all we need. The only thing I think we might want to add is at the very end of the game, I'm just gonna add a poke $0.286, we'll come a one here, so the cursor is white when it ends. So uh, let's give this uh, an assemble. Give this a run. Awesome. Looks like our game is working. This is fantastic. Let's uh let's save this. And let's update some of our notes. So let's see. We definitely have gotten some visualizations in the game, which is great. We have calculated and displayed a score. We're doing that. Uh, we still have to figure out what happens at 20 rounds. We should have something where when the game ends, we should ask the player if they want to play again. And then I think that's all we really need. So we'll finish that last task up in the next video. So we're pretty much down to the wire here. The game is mostly done at this point. So uh, if you stick around for the next video, we'll get these two tasks complete. And then I'll kind of go over um, some interesting things about the development process that might be interesting to everyone. Thanks again so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next video in the series.